Thank you, Faisal. Um, once again, welcome all um, to this fifth, uh, uh, 15th um, annual conference of uh, NAPQ. Um, these are difficult times, and it is uh, uh, very gratifying to see that people have, uh, have made time and effort in uh, being here, especially when there's so much of uncertainty within the wider health economy. We also have a change of government, in case anyone's noticed. and. Um, Obviously, there aren't any pigs flying out of the Department of Health, uh, the policy implementation guides, as they used to be referred to. Um, so everything's on hold until there is further clarity as to uh, what the landscape is going to look like over the next few um, over the next few years. Um, I'm going to uh, provide you with a very a whirlwind tour, um, as I usually do, um, taking a brief overview of NAPQ and what we've done over the last year. Um, always worthwhile uh, being very clear and precise as to what the aims of NAPQ are. Um, and we hold ourselves within the exec um, uh, directly responsible for delivering on our aims, as we have done over the last 15 years, to improve service user experience and outcomes, to promote staff support and development within PQ and low secure environments in a very multidisciplinary manner. Uh, to work towards improving mechanisms for the delivery of intensive care and low secure services, to work towards auditing effectiveness and promoting research, education, and practice development. So in this regard, we um, uh, work uh, with a variety of tools uh, and implements, if you like, to deliver on our aims. Um, the first is having a robust and active membership and in this regard, we are ably supported by Northern Networking, who maintain all our database systems. Um, we currently have over 145 NAPQ members, and this includes uh, national health, private units, um, international units, and personal members. Uh, the international membership uh, especially has increased over recent years. And obviously, uh, the benefits to our members is attendance at quarterly meetings, at, at uh, accessing conferences such as this, as well as, uh, as well as various forms of educational development that we have done and will do in the future. Um, the benefits also include um, uh, the journal, as well as the uh, podcasting and various other uh, quarterly meetings that we have. Now. Uh, Faisal's referred to uh, um, the quarterly meetings. We have had about 65 quarterly meetings, and each one of these has about uh, anything from 50 to 100 people attending um, the quarterly meetings. They form a very robust and active method of dis uh, disseminating um, information about intensive care, low secure care, as well as recent and exciting developments. Um, for the very first time in February of next year, we are going to have an international quality meeting, a, a quarterly meeting in Bruges uh, in Belgium. Uh, this is uh, with uh, Dr. Chris Bevroitz and his uh, team. He's worked very closely with the exec to try and put a program together. Um, following that, we uh, hope to foster greater links, uh, not only with Belgium, but also with other countries. Um, Locally, we have Paul Deacon, who is going to be holding the next quarterly meeting in Truro. Um, I think it is important to um, talk a little bit about uh, our uh, way of communication. Um, the website, uh, well, we are all in, in, in the technology age, well established there, and our website is a very active method and mechanism for uh, our members to liaise with us. Alan Madrol has worked for many years to try and refine it and develop it. And we continue to get uh, uh, a lot of interest uh, from not only within the UK but uh, abroad. We've joined with Amazon to provide an online bookshop of specialist books on intensive care. We have a discussion board that is open to uh, talking about and debating uh, difficulties and issues uh, in intensive care and low secure. This website is being revamped uh, to make a better user interface. Um, the, moving on to um, other things that we've been doing, 
Uh, myself and a team within RPQ, we worked very closely with the uh, Secure Services Policy Board at the Department of Health. They've constituted a board which is a Department of Health Board and a Ministry of Justice Board. Uh, probably an indication of things to come in uh, uh, terms of further developments, especially in low secure care. And we uh, have worked towards refining the Department of Health 2002 national minimum standards that we had put together. Um, what exactly is going to transpire in terms of new policy, we do not know, because ministers have to decide the direction of uh, travel, um, depending on the information that's going to be available to them. But there are going to be various cost efficiencies, which seems to be the current buzzword um, all around. Um, so that's with the department, um, and we'll keep you updated about that. Um, we are continuing uh, where education is concerned. Andy Johnston uh, continues to work with Kingston University to try and deliver on our PQ practitioner program, and we will have more of that um, in the months to come. Where the journal is concerned, uh, this is the old uh, cover of the journal. We have a new revamped cover for the journal. Roland Dix has done a heroic job in um, keeping um, various issues going. This is our sixth year of the journal. It's very highly regarded. Um, it is uh, popular, and all um, research in intensive care, low secure care, now becomes uh, established within this journal. We are working towards four issues per year from the current two issues per year, which will help us get medlined, so to speak. So we haven't flat flatlined um, yet, as um, uh, can happen with journals. So we're, uh, we've been very successful with that. So I'm pleased about that. Um, well, obviously, uh, this is the second edition of the book, but uh, what we're now doing is uh, Paul Burkett, who is consultant psychiatrist in Sheffield, is uh, uh, we're going to have a researcher on board to develop uh, various CPD modules to deliver on multidisciplinary learning uh, for CPD online. And uh, this program will be up and running by the conference uh, next year in Gloucester. Now, um, we're going to have a little bit uh, more on the uh, uh, accreditation program, but we uh, have worked very closely with the Center for Quality Improvement of the Royal College of Psychiatrists as part of the AIMS program to develop one for uh, PQs and low secure care. And we formally launched um, the um, uh, our marriage, if you like, on the 2nd of June in London this year. Um, and a, a small team within NAPQ, Matt Page, Stephen Dye, Alan Madrol have been working uh, together to refine the uh, AIM standards to make them fit for purpose for intensive care and low secure care. So we have a current version which is going to be updated um, next year. So what is AIMS for? Um, it is in addition to working in partnership, it is for quality monitoring to uh, demonstrate um, adherence, if you like, to NHS standards, service planning, development of standards, improving health services research, information sharing, and benchmarking. And we hope through this mechanism, um, uh, uh, we will continue to deliver on the national minimum quality standards uh, that we put together a few um, years ago. So if you, you must be aware of this program because you will be held to account for it by your own uh, local commissioners uh, uh, in your neck of the wood somewhere down the line um, or by the CQC. Um, just moving on, um, we uh, now have uh, various co-opted uh, members onto the exec committee. Um, Faisal has been uh, doing an able job as director of scientific programs. We have Peter Pratt, who's chief pharmacist from Sheffield, who's on our exec committee, who has been providing um, guidance on various psychopharmacology-related issues, along with Caroline Parker, who's also chief pharmacist based in London. We have Dr. Steve Chung from Birmingham, Dr. Ian Natu from London, and we have Bernard and Keith, who are our users, um, and of course, Paul Deacon uh, down from Truro. Um, moving swiftly on, um, I now want to talk uh, very briefly about um, well, what, we've, uh, uh, what we hope um, will, will be uh, a well-established uh, uh, award for NAPQ, by NAPQ rather, um, to significant uh, individuals who have been friends of NAPQ. And this is the Henri 
uh, fellowship uh, award. We agreed uh, within the exec to establish this award simply to recognize the contribution of um, our friends um, to Napaki on the cause of intensive care and low secure care. Um, this is the first year that we would have uh, uh, made this uh, award, and I'm delighted to say that um, we um, uh, all agreed that uh, Malcolm Ray uh, would be um, a very distinguished and absolutely <coughs> right uh, person to be the recipient of our first award. Um, Colin Dale will talk about Malcolm uh, in a moment, but uh, Malcolm has recently retired as a joint strategic lead for the acute care program of the National Mental Health Development Unit. He remains as an advisor um, to the National Mental Health Development Unit, the NPSA, the CQC, on the prevention and management of suicide violence and other safety issues. He was formerly um, nursing officer for mental health or the chief uh, nursing officer for mental health, I should say, and forensic psychiatry at the Department of Health from 1997 to 2002. He is author of Freedom to Care and numerous articles. He was awarded the OBE in 1996 for services to healthcare. In 2001, he was awarded a fellowship of the Royal College of Nursing for his contribution uh, to nursing leadership in the UK. He's also a fellow of the University of Central Lancashire and an honorary fellow of Staffordshire University. Um, I think it is reasonable to say that Malcolm is probably one of the best networked individuals in mental health that I know in the UK. He has extensive networks. Um, he has also mentored various individuals over a period of time who have gone on to become chief executive of various trusts in the country. Um, he was part of the Ashworth uh, uh, Task Force following the Blom uh, Cooper inquiry. He also established the King's Fund Development Unit for Nursing in Salford, which was a first. And he's worked very, very closely with user, users and carers over time uh, to raise their profile and the contribution of their work in the UK. And uh, last but not the least, of course, uh, he was the architect of the acute care uh, policy uh, on the back of which the national minimum standards uh, uh, came about. I've been very fond of uh, Malcolm. I've worked closely with him for the last 15 years. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted that he's um, now going to be the recipient of our first Henri Fellowship, uh, Fellowship Award. And I'll hand over to Colin Dale. Thank you.